right, we had the first frost where I lived the other day, so it's getting to that time, them cold winter months. And we have to think about what we're doing a little bit more really light in the old winter. It does get a bit hard, but uh, the rewards are there nevertheless. So um, my number one piece of advice would be to choose the water that you fish quite carefully in the winter. Waters like this one, Semex's Sand Earth Lake, are quite shallow. So they tend to respond to favourable conditions in the winter. So if you get like a nice bit of warm weather, places like Sandhurst tend to warm up and quite quickly too. I mean, uh, one example was I fished here and I basically got bites probably two days after the lake defrosted. It was completely frozen. Two days later it defrosted and we managed to get bites because uh, the water warmed up just that little bit. So um, equally, some waters switch off. So, uh, some waters which are like pretty good waters in uh, summer because they're quite deep or whatever tend not to warm up and tend not to respond to favourable winter conditions. So choose your water carefully would be my first bit of advice. Um, number two, carp are creatures of habit. Now, more often than not, uh, the same winter areas produce year in, year out. Now, there's a few areas here over on Sanders, deep, silty depressions, uh, and this is where invariably the fish end up every winter. If they're not in one depression, there'll be in another. So equally, there'll be areas where fish just don't go or very rarely go in the, in the hard depths of winter, like shallow areas and all this kind of thing. So there equally might be areas that you've heard about that on your particular water have never produced a winter capture. So they'll be the ones to steer clear of. Check out the aerial photography websites. You'll get like views from above where you can check out where their mega shallow areas are. And you'll see, you know, there'll be like two foot of water, big expanses of two and three foot of water, which just wouldn't be uh, a good winter proposition. Equally, you can see where them deeper areas are. So there'll be particular areas, deeper silty areas, next to island margins, that kind of thing. Uh, nice deep back bays and whatever, where a light, basically they're likely winter areas and are always worth a try. Carp will feed just as voraciously in the winter as they do in the summer, but in more localised hotspots. Like one example I can use is when I was fishing over at Frimley Pit 2 like a few years ago, I was fishing next to this like basically a marginal bush, about two foot off it, something like that, fishing with a stiff rig set up, um, a chocolate malt pop up and like a handful of sweet corn over the top when I got there. And I got I think about seven or eight bites that particular, uh, particular day. Um, and it was all on this one particular spot. I'd get a bite, basically go back around there, put another handful of corn out, whack the bait back out there and get a bite within something like 15 minutes, but all on that one particular spot. Um, I didn't need to be too near the bush or basically if I was like a, a couple of foot off it, um, I wouldn't get a bite and I'd have to recast and I'd get a bite. Um, another one is my mate Dave Benton. He had some incredible amount of bites down near one February, but all on one rod going out to one particular spot which he'd marked up uh, with a bit of tape on his line and every time he took it out to that spot and dropped, like, because he was using the bait boat, because he's a bit of a cheater, Dave, um, every time he dropped, <laughs> um, he'd get, you know, it, it'd be bang on this marker. If he was five foot beyond it or five foot to the right, he wouldn't get a bite. But all the action, I think it was something like 40-odd fish in, like, three nights fishing, all came to that one particular rod on that one particular spot. So always bear that in mind. Right, my advice would always be to veer even more to the side of caution um, when it comes to baits and all that kind of thing. Don't go in too heavy on the bait. Say, for example, a little free bait stringer is a good one with these like little 12 mil baits. Um, alternatively, I'd use like a little bag or something with that. Only a mouthful because you're only fishing for one bite and one mouthful at a time. So like a small bag, I've got there with some of the old Sutton specials all crumbled up, or equally that one tiny little bag there. Um, just a bit of nut meal in there which is uh, quite a nice bait so I'd fish like something like that or as I say a two bait stringer three bait stringer just one mouthful at a time if we're talking about like baits in the winter I've always done well on the old Richworth Tootie Fruities I'm going to give John's bait a try this winter things like our pineapple pop-ups these are a good one the old uh, Nutribates pineapple and then butyric acid I've done quite well on them and I know Martin Pick's done quite well on them as well, like used in conjunction with the sweet corn stringer. As I say, yeah, sweet corn's a good one. Like, as I said, I got like a fair few bites at one time, like just with a handful of corn around it because it's quite visual. In the winter, where conditions allow, 
like I always try and scale down my presentation a little bit. So say for example in the summer I would have used like 15 pound line on, uh, on one particular water that I was fishing. Over here on Sanders during the winter I find I can scale down to like 12 pound GR60 like um, because there's no real snags in the water uh, and it's pretty clear out there you know. I mean like terminal tackle wise Equally, I'd scale it down again. I mean, in this case, I've got like a simple KD rig there. 10 pound suffix cam fusion. Um, and on there, I've got like a size 9 Drennan barb look, which is like a straight point hook with an interned eye. Really nice, very, very sharp point, um, and very, very strong. Another good one, ZSP 12 pound strip tees. I use that especially for the old MAGA liner and that because the braid inside is so thin and fine. And that's good for the old KD rig as well and that. But you have to steam that one just to straighten it out, really. I mean, like, hook-wise, uh, one of my favourites, size 10 wide gate, called a wide gate, which is a really good hook. You can use that for that, uh, that KD rig. Um, alternatively, things like size 10 or 12 Gardner Muggers or the old Atomic Claws. Again, that one's a, an intern point with an interned eye. That's a good, sharp, small look. So always find your presentation down if you can. The old maggots come into their own in the winter. I mean, as uh, many people well know, I caught like a fair few fish, one f like kind of January, February, um, at the old bailiffs over there. And also at like number 13 on the maggot liner, which is um, just an absolutely awesome rig. So uh, yeah, because of the, the lack of small fish activity, the silver fish activity, you can get away with using, uh, using the old maggots over here during the winter. So the maggot line is a good one. And also the Medusa rig. Now, that was a rig that I'd not really used um, up until a couple of years ago. And Leon Bartrop come down here, and I see him catch a good fish on the old Medusa. So I like, asked him, what's that all about, mate? Because literally I'd never used it and didn't really know about it. So he showed me what he was doing. And what he was doing was using between like 30 and 40 maggots um, on the end of the hair, so to speak, like threaded on there. A uh, couple of buoyant ones on there, so it's a big ball like that, big ball of maggots. And it, I, I think it worked because it was just like a take it or leave it scenario in the winter, and it was too good an opportunity to miss for the fish. You know, they see this great big ball of food there, and they took it into their mouths. And I caught a real good common over there, like a 37 pound common on them on the Medusa using 30, 30 maggots, a few kind of like uh, soft buoyant ones, and um, on a KD rig. And that is with uh, a size 9 ESP D7, which was uh, another good hook, you know. Um, so, yeah, the, the maggots come into their own during the winter. You can use them with the maga liner with big mag bags or small mag bags or the old Medusa, and they're always a good option. Right, another one, and this is mega important, is always make sure that you're, like, comfortable and warm and all of that kind of thing in the winter because there's nothing like being cold when you're fishing in the winter because you want to go home. So have adequate shelter, have enough gas with you, enough water to make like loads of cups of tea and cook-ups and nice food and all that kind of thing. Make sure you've got plenty of clothing and make sure you've got plenty of spare clothing in case you get a good old fish and you get wet and all that kind of thing. Good pair of boots. I bought, bought an awful pair of boots the other year from the macro and they looked good. But when I took them fishing, I had no insulation in the feet and I got cold feet and I had to go out and buy another pair of boots. And I weren't happy about that, let me tell you. Always pay extra attention to signs of fish or fish catchers like during the winter. I mean, if you're watching the water, especially early in the morning, even if the, in the depths of winter, you'll see the odd show, and that'll be them giving them away. Because uh, in the winter, the fish group up. So if you see one show, you can be sure that there's a number of fish out there. So that's always, always pay attention to what's going on. Equally, if someone catches a fish on that particular water, you think, oh, yeah, they're in that area, and, and, and get like an inkling as to where the group of fish are. Never, ever neglect a zig in the winter. Um... I mean, over here, we were zigging it up. Me and Martin were zigging it up mega early in the year. And it's, it's really funny. I think quite a lot of the time in the winter, fish spend a lot of their time like mid-water. They find like a comfortable area in the column of water. Um, and that's where they sit, for, you know, for good long periods of time. So quite often, the fish won't drop down to the bottom. They'll just sit there in that comfortable zone. So I've always thought you might as well bring the, you know, not fish on the bottom, almost, quote, bring the battle to them and fish a zig right in amongst them. So as they're sat, in, sat there in their kind of semi-torpid state in the winter, it's, again, it's too good an opportunity to miss, and I think they'll always turn around and take the zig into their mouth, so never neglect a zig in the winter. If you find that correct depth, you can properly have it off. 
you always fish one or two rovers, depending on how many rods you're using, two or three. It always pays to like keep one rod moving about, trying to find the fish in the depth of water. I mean, cast it out. If you don't get a bite on it, have a recast, and like that one, you might get a bite on, so then you can switch the other rod onto it, and you're zoning in on the fish, so to speak. So always fish one or two as rovers. Another one is, um, and there was a fella called Dave Miller, who's an excep- exceptionally good angler. Uh, he used to fish over at Frimley, and he'd deal exceptionally well during the winter. And that would be that basically he'd always have a spare rod behind him with his rig and another stringer or whatever it was, like, ready to go. So what he'd do, he'd have a fish... And as soon as that fish was in the net, he could turn around, grab his spare rod, whack that back out there to where he'd caught the fish from, and more often than not, he'd get a bite straight after that as well because there was more fish feeding there, again, in that localised spot, but for a shorter period of time. So always maximise your time in the winter. Yeah, they're my tips for the winter fishing, and I hope they bring you a bit of success. (laughs) 